We are going to begin by continuing with our discussion of the mind-body problem. We have looked at substance dualism, particularly Cartesian dualism, and we have looked at identity theory. Well, now we are going to look at functionalism, which is another of the materialists theories. So functionalism as a materialist theory does not want to discuss mental properties in non-physical terms. It's going to give us a discussion of mental properties in physical terms. And for functionalism, mental states are just the functions that they perform. Okay, the functions that they perform or functional states. The mental state is the process that gets a reaction from a stimulus. Let's, let's consider an example, okay? Consider that, um, consider stubbing the toe, okay? So somebody here, our friend here, stubs his toe on the chair. In the brain, there are things that happen, okay? So when we stub the toe, neurons fire, messages get sent up into the brain. And in the brain, neurons fire, chemicals are, are excreted, and that causes other neurons to fire and other chemicals to be excreted, okay? So this is um, at time one. Well, at time two, at time two, there are other neurons firing and other chemicals that are being secreted. And this is our friend, okay? This is all the same person. So then, as a result, neurons fire again, send messages through the body, and we jump up and say, ouch. In identity theory, this one state at T1, okay, would have been pain. For identity theory, identity theory says that that equals pain. But functionalism isn't going to capture a brain state. For functionalism, it is not just T1, but it is T1 and T2 and anything else that's in the process. Okay, so functionalism Functionalism says the process, T1, T2, maybe even T3, this snippet, this, it's, this process equals pain. So let me give you, let's see if I can come up with an analogy, okay? Consider taking a photograph. If one takes a photograph, takes a picture, we're, one will catch a singular frozen moment in time, right? Taking a, a, a snapshot with your camera, with your cell phone, whatever you're using, it's capturing one moment frozen in time. That is identity theory. That's the brain state, okay? That's the brain state. That's identity theory. But now consider, instead of taking a snapshot, you take a video. 
okay? So you take a video and you capture several moments, the series of them in time. That's functionalism. Functionalism takes what goes on in the brain and the body to some extent as well over the course of maybe milliseconds, but still the the individual states in those milliseconds combined make a process. It makes a process from the reaction, stubbing the toe, to the reaction, the stimulus, to the reaction of jumping up and saying, ouch. Okay? So for functionalism, it's more about the several states as they create a process. And it's that process that is the mental state. Does that make sense? Now, functionalism has an advantage over theories like identity theory because if a mental state is just this process, it's not reliant on the particular physical stuff. What that means is, it is not reliant on having squishy gray matter brain. This is called multiple realizability. Mental states can be manifested in many different kinds of substances. So the process can occur in squishy gray matter organic substances, or the process could occur in uh, gooey, icky, fibrousy substance like an ET, or maybe, just maybe, it will even manifest itself in electronic computer parts, substances, okay? So it doesn't have to be organic even. So functionalism allows for different kinds of things to have processes which could count as mental states. Does that make sense?